designing a do-it-yourself um, heated driveway for snow melt thing. So I've done all the calculations, I'm about three days into trying to figure all this out, trips to the plumbing store, so I know what products I'm going to use. I'm going to use the Upener PEX A with oxygen barrier, three-quarter inch. They have a great design manual on their website. It's only about 156 pages, and it really is written very well, easy to understand for anybody. Um, you can go get textbooks. You can do all kinds of stuff, but that really tells you how to do all the calculations just to make sure you've got you know, enough BTUs for whatever you're going to do. So what I've done is because I don't have a CAD CAM program to draw out my lines to know how, how long my loops are going to be, I already know how long they're going to be. I just don't know how to place them. So what I do is I got a water hose and I tied it, everything together, make it 300 feet. And I've divided, I know I'm going to have three zones based on the calculations I did on Upener's uh, design manual. And I divided my heated area up into three parts. And so I just took the 300 feet foot hose and I basically just laid out so that I'm not fumbling with 300 foot roll of hex a tubing trying to figure out and adjust it how it's go you know how it's going to lay out so i just laid out with a water hose took a picture kind of drew it out that way we've got a rough sketch on how we're going to lay it out we've got our insulation all laid down i used one inch r5 high density foam that'll lay under the concrete and i'm going to lay my tubing right on top of the rebar and the rebar is not elevated yet, but once I get it on there, when, when they're pouring concrete, they will raise the rebar up and it'll just, it'll stay. And we'll have about three inches on top of, of concrete on top of the tubing. I'm using three quarter inch packs, the HE oxygen barrier stuff, opener, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay, here we go. Today's the day of the pouring concrete over the snow melt system. We laid that till about 1.30 in the morning yesterday. It's all laid out, got three circuits. Got my manifold gauge over there. Here it is, it's all poured. Uh, they got the uh, blue retarder on it. They'll come back tomorrow and wash off for the uh, exposed aggregate finish. But I wanna show you the manifold that I made before they got here and pressurized it to 80 PSI. And I have my, all my circuits labeled and taped together. These two, here's my temperature sensor lead extra long lead that I bought off of Amazon and uh, had a pressure gauge I dropped it down to 30 while they were pouring it it's been holding all day got a valve regulator put my air in pretty simple well, you've seen the layout of the snow melt tubing in the driveway. And uh, I'll give you a quick tour of the inside and show you the hydronic control part of the snow melt system. Uh, it's been a few months. Uh, when I originally laid out the tubing, I didn't have any idea what it was, how I was going to tie into my boiler system at the time. And uh, it's been quite a project, but it's been a lot of fun. Let's get on. I'll show you here. This is the tubing as it comes in from the uh, the driveway and I ended up using the Propex fittings they're a little PEX ring that expands uh, with a tool and you expand it you slide it on the fitting and then it slowly crimps back down and makes a really good seal the advantage to these is it doesn't restrict the flow like the store-bought the, the Home Depot type PEX crimp fittings and uh, they're a little bit more, more expensive. You have to buy them from a plumbing supply place, but uh, 
I felt it was pretty worth it. I will end up, when I get down here, I'll end up insulating all these tubings. I just want to make this video so you could kind of see without all the insulation on it. But um, here we've got the manifold. Uh, I bought this off of eBay and it, uh, it works pretty good. I mean, it's got the flow meters, bleed valve, temperature gauges, and uh, comes with these shutoff valves. You have to add the fittings to it. Um, I got my temp sensor there buried in the concrete. Here's my circulator. Uh, that was one of the biggest issues I had trying to figure out what size. It seems to work pretty good. I end up getting about three quarters of a gallon per minute when it's when the glycol's all warmed up. I'll get about three quarters of a gallon per minute per circuit, and it stays. Um, below 100 degrees. I like to keep it below 100 degrees uh, just to avoid any thermal shock on the concrete. Here is my expansion tank. Tubes run over to the heat exchanger because my boiler system is all water so I have to separate it between the two circuits and uh, I kind of guessed on that size but it's plenty big. It puts out plenty plenty heat. This is a zone valve. It's, this is basically just another zone on my boiler system and uh, I tied into it right here with the uh, shark bite T fitting. They seem to work pretty good. And it goes over here. This is my incoming hotline and I did put a globe valve that where I can adjust the flow if I ever want to. Uh, so far I haven't needed to and it tees into the incoming with another shark bite fitting. Over here is the control and I've got my zone controller up here for my boiler system. So I just put a simple on off switch and uh, ideally you'd put a timer on this uh, to, to avoid leaving it on but uh, whenever it's on I'm pretty attentive to it. I don't turn it on and leave home but I'll probably eventually end up putting a smart switch in or I can control it with my smart home system. But I'll give you a demonstration here. Zone 4, turn it on, it's calling for heat. Zone valve opens. And you hear the boiler kick on. I normally run my boiler at about 135 or so, 140. Uh, when I got when I'm running the snow melt, I'll kick it up to 150 or, or more just to keep uh, keep the temperature up. But it puts quite a load on it. We'll go over here. You can see the pressure is climbing. getting warm and we got some flow not a lot yet it's got to warm up like I said laying out the tubing was a was a big part uh, a big a big issue and if I was going to do it again I would I would hire somebody to draw out how my tubing should go I ended up having quite a bit a bit of an issue with my concrete guy he didn't like my lines crossing the way I had them drawn and uh, he, he thought it would reduce the amount of thickness and lead to cracking so I ended up having to scramble to the last minute, change the, the layout and um, that would have all been avoided if I would had a, a real life, you know, good drawing of, of how to do the tubing. So that would be the one thing that I would change. So here's the tooling for the the Propex fittings. I just bought the hand cramp crimper. It's uh, they're about a hundred bucks on Amazon or eBay. And uh, these are the fittings, the the sleeves, and these little fittings. And you, like I said, you can only buy these at uh, plumbing supply stores. So I hope this helps.
somebody if they're ever going to design a do-it-yourself snowmelt system. Thanks for watching.